So the Premier League once again returns to St James's Park on Saturday lunchtime where the visitors are West Ham United. And uh, how different fortunes have changed for both sides since we won down there on the opening day of the season. This is going to be a tough game. This is the Toon Review. Hi everybody, my name is Paul. Welcome back again to another video where we are previewing Saturday lunchtime Premier League encounter between Newcastle United and West Ham United. And like I said in the intro there, fortunes for both teams have well and truly gone in different directions since we won 2-0 at the London Stadium. West Ham, they've looked onwards and upwards and have had a brilliant season. And for us, well, we all know our situation and where we lie in the table. Um, but confidence will have definitely been uh, taken from the victory last week at Burnley, uh, winning uh, two goals to one down there but the performance was still not right um, the first half especially was absolutely dreadful and you can guarantee if we play like that in the first half by just punting the ball back up the field to West Ham they will come at us a lot stronger than Burnley did they have better individuals in that team I believe than Burnley and have the players to hurt us obviously Antonio is going to be missing I believe and possibly Declan Rice uh, that's a bonus to us uh, a lot of people have said that Declan Rice um, you know, is a bit of a mysterious player I think he's a wonderful player me, and I think he's got a, a lot of talent um, and can go on to much bigger and better things in the future um, so having him injured is possibly going to be a massive bonus to us but the one man that's really shone for West Ham since the transfer window is Jesse Lingard and I was one of those that believed that really his heart wasn't in football anymore um, you know when you looked at him his body language at West at Man United he wasn't getting in the team and you just thought nah, his heart's not in it and how He's proved everybody wrong. I mean, he's been sensational since he's gone to West Ham. Scoring goals, he's all over the pitch, he's creating chances, and he's starting to look like the Jesse Lingard that everybody thought he was going to be when he was a young kid on loan at various different clubs. Um, just the talent that that guy has, he's really making a push for the Euros this this coming summer. So we have got to be switched on from the off. Now, I believe that Steve Bruce will play the same formation again because, let's face it, he doesn't change the formation to suit the teams we're playing against. If he wins a game with a formation or he draws with a formation and thinks, oh, that works, I'll just play it again. So the team that I'm going to give you is the team that I think Steve Bruce will put out. Um, I know normally I go with the team that I want to see on the pitch, but I think this time, you know, realistically, it's it's never going to be right. And uh, I've got more chance of getting it right if I believe uh, I go with what Steve Bruce is going to go with. Um, so I think he's he's got to really keep the same personnel. Um, let's face it, Shelfie's not going to be dropped uh, he's our captain now, Bruce has made him captain and he's not going to drop the captain now so we have to put up with Shelby being captain for the rest of the season um, do I agree with that? Absolutely fucking not um, however, you know, it is what it is Matt Ritchie, we all know, is a leader, is passionate, he's committed to the club and he doesn't want us to go down. Matt, Le Matt Ritchie is the leader on the pitch, whether Shelby's got the armband or not. You can see Matt Ritchie shouting at players, bollocking them when they need to be bollocked. He's Ging them up, he's Ging the team up. That's what a captain should be like. So for me, armband or not, Matt Ritchie is the captain on that pitch. Um, now, we have to really shore up in midfield. We can't let West Ham come through us like Burnley did in the middle of the park. Because they have, like I said, they've got the better players than what Burnley had to hurt us. And Lingard running through that midfield, he will hurt us. He will hurt us badly. Suchek will hurt us badly. They've got players who can hurt us. And, you know, especially if we give them the freedom of St. James's Park through the middle, like we did with Burnley last week. You know, our midfield was so open. Sean Langstaff had to do so much running compared to Shelby. Um... I really, really would love to see Willock alongside Longstaff because it would take the, the heat off Longstaff. He wouldn't have to cover so much uh, ground and he could concentrate on maybe going a bit further forward. But we know it's not going to happen. Um, the team I believe that Steve Bruce will go with is Dubravka in goal. Um, Jacob Murphy will continue at right wing back and I don't see any reason to change that because he's been brilliant. Um, yes, his distribution and his defending is a little bit 
sort of iffy at times. But come on, let the guy grow into the position. He is a right winger after all, and he's, he's settling back into a defensive position now, pushing forward. He's got the engine to get both ways, you know, forward and backwards. So he's a perfect wing back in that respect. But give him time. Let him nurture the position of right wing back. And I'm sure we'll see a, a, a tremendous player there. Uh, I really want to see him sign a new contract and stay at the club. I think he fully deserves it. He's done his time on loan. Let him back into the club and really grow for, uh, for Newcastle United. Left wing back for me is Matt Ritchie all day long. Um, you know, like I just said before, he's, for me, the leader on the pitch. He motivates the guys. He bollocks them when he has to. Uh, and he's the one guy that will say how it is on the pitch. Um, the three centre-backs for me, no change there. Dummett, Clark and uh, Fernandez, uh, I think, were, were, were excellent against Burnley. The amount of crosses that Burnley put in against us was frightening, but we dealt with them all pretty well, I think. You know, as, uh, as with Dubravka as well, coming for the ball, uh, he looked very assured, very, very vocal, uh, caught a lot of them, punched a lot of them, didn't really miss any of the crosses that came in. And that's what we really need in goal. Somebody that's vocal like that, who can really give them sort of three central defenders a bit of respite and a bit of understanding uh, and know when he's coming for the ball. And, and when he does come, he gets it. Uh, so the three centre-backs for me, no need to change there. I think midfield, he's not going to change that either. I think, you know, Shelby and Longstaff will be the middle pairing uh, unless he brings Willock in for Longstaff. Uh, I don't think in hell's world that he'll drop John Joe Shelby. So uh, it's it's one or the other for me. It's Willock or Longstaff alongside him. Then further forward is obviously going to be Miggy. Now, Miggy really needs to stay further forward for me. Um, I know he's coming back and helping the defence out, but when we've got five at the back, we don't need him doing that. He takes a lot on his shoulders, Miggy, and he, he you know, he doesn't need to. He's backtracking, he's moving forward, but he's for me, he's not getting in those attacking positions that we should see Miggy in. And I want to see him there more often. Um, and I'm not criticising him for that because I think, you know, he's taking it on himself to do everything for this football club. He's back defending, he's trying to get forward, but we need to see Miggy in the areas that we will hurt opposition teams. We've got the defenders there, the midfielders can cover that as well. Get Miggy through in the number 10 role, bursting forward like we saw from St. Maximan last week, bursting forward into the box and causing real, real problems for the opposition. Now, the front two, um, St. Maximan for me has to start. I think he's, uh, his fitness is there now. Um, do I think he's 100% fit? No, because I don't think he's been 100% fit all season. Uh, but we need him in the side. We really need him in the side. And I think Callum Wilson should start as well. Uh, obviously, got to run out against Burnley. He's had this week to train, uh, although we know they don't train as much as other Premier League teams, but hey-ho. Um, I do think Wilson should start, and then if he fades out of the game after an hour or so, then change it then. Um, but start your best players, especially if they're fit enough to be on the bench, guys, they're fit enough to start. So let's get them on there um, and, and make sure that we, we really go for the jugular for West Ham straight away. Um, I believe it's going to be a very tight game. I believe there will be goals in it, though. Uh, and if we have, if we play to the best of our ability, I believe we can get a result. Uh, there's no reason why we can't, but we cannot afford to play as badly as we did in that first half at Burnley. Because if we play like that in the first half against West Ham, we could be two or three down at half time, and the game's over. No matter how well we play in the second half, the game is done and dusted and gone. So we can't afford that. What I want to see is us play football, play attacking football, and look to win the game. Don't just look to sit back and draw. Because West Ham are one of these teams that if we sit back to draw, they will hurt us because they have the personnel to do it. Without a shadow of a doubt have the personnel to do it. And we will be left with egg on our faces. We have got to go out there and perform and keep the concentration for 90 minutes. Don't lapse at all. And we've been guilty of that in the last few games, which has been tragic really, because we could have got so much more out of previous games had we not had these defensive lapses. But... I believe that if, if we go out with the right attitude against West Ham, we can get a result. A lot of people are predicting a draw. Um, I'm going to go for a 2-1 Newcastle win. I think if we start those players that I've mentioned there, certainly the forward guys, just come together, play the football and score a couple of goals. Uh, West Ham will be a threat throughout the match. We know that. Uh, but it's how we deal with Lingard. I think he is the key for West Ham at the minute, given the injuries they've got. He is the key man. Uh, Suchek as well, he's, he's scoring the goals. Uh, but for me, Lingard is the man that we need to really, really take care of. Um, Shelby's certainly not the man to do that. Whether Longstaff can do that, you know, or we put a man-marking job on him, I don't know. That's up to the manager, uh, who I have no faith in at all. But uh, that's another story. Um, 
Anyway, that's my prediction. That's my predicted team lineup and preview of the game. Uh, let me know in the comments below if you agree with that team or who you would change. Um, I know I've said all along I want to see a 4 2 3 1. I don't think we're ever going to see that again under Steve Bruce, to be honest. But hey ho, um, I've had to go with a lineup that I believe Steve Bruce will pick. Uh, hopefully, we can. that lineup is good enough to get a result, but we will see. Put in the comments below uh, what you think of that team lineup predicted results and things like that uh, and I will catch you on the next one uh, my match reaction will be straight after the game uh, on Saturday live as usual so don't forget to tune into that uh, hopefully praying to God we celebrate another three points that would be absolutely amazing in the meantime guys enjoy the rest of your week and stay safe out there enjoy the fresh air take care Be strong, Be strong.